Good evening, everyone. Let me welcome all of our viewers on Hatmitra today once again. It's always a pleasure to connect with you for these uh, live sessions. Hatmitra is, as you know, created for all of you. And not only we uh, post content for you on a daily basis, but also for you, we invite renowned doctors from across the country who can talk to you as a friend and answer the queries which you have in your mind. Today, I'm very glad to welcome Dr. Uh, Somanta Chatterjee from the city of Kolkata. Sir, welcome to the program. Dr. Somanta, we received a lot of uh, queries from our viewers and the chat, which is around uh, the cardiac issues. And, and one of the things which they want to understand is the sleep disorders. That is, uh, there, is there a connection between sleep disorders and the cardiac disease? And today we will be taking up these questions uh, of our viewers and take your expertise on this. But before I start asking the questions, let me you know quickly introduce uh, Dr. Sumanto to all of you formally. He is one of the well-known cardiologists uh, from the city of Kolkata, as I earlier shared with you. Uh, to begin with, he did his uh, initial graduation in medicine and masters from uh, medical college in Kolkata with gold medals. And post that, he did his super specialization in cardiology. And again, he topped uh, his institutions over there. Uh, he has various research papers, publications, and awards to his credit. And currently, he is working as senior interventional cardiologist at Manipal Hospitals, Kolkata. His expertise is in managing complex angioplasties, and he likes to use latest technology while treating his patients. Let me hand over, sir, straight away to you now, and to get your opening comments on this topic, and then we will take in the questions from the audience. Uh, good evening, everybody. I am Dr. Shumanto Chatterjee. Uh, today we'll be talking on an uh, interesting topic and an interesting topic that is sleep apnea syndrome what is that thing mm, i mean it's, it's a complex disease it's uh, i mean disturbed sleep at night increased sleepiness during daytime increased amount of snoring at night and uh, associated with multiple episodes of sleep break the so four things are there reduce sleep at night increase daytime sleepiness sleep break multiple sleep breaks at night and snoring so these four elements if combined uh, in a combined way present that is called obstructive sleep apnea it's not like that i am having less sleep at night and i am having obstructive sleep apnea less sleep at night is just one component of obstructive sleep apnea so we'll be discussing on this topic today okay well that i think that's very interesting to start with he has mentioned it's not just the time of duration of sleep it's four things you know which you need to be taking care of uh, while calculating your sleep time uh, sir i mean you know being a cardiologist uh, the first question if i may ask you that is there a risk you know associated with sleep disorders and the cardiac well is it a major risk factor and how does it actually contributes uh, to the cardiac disease? So obstructive sleep apnea is a risk factor to develop cardiac disease as like your hypertension, as like obesity, as like hypothyroidism, as like increased cholesterol, as like diabetes mellitus. So obstructive sleep apnea, sleep apnea is a risk factor, number one. And number two, mostly 30% of this obstructive sleep apnea patients do have other components or other risk factors of cardiac disease namely hypertension hypothyroidism obesity sedentary lifestyle diabetes mellitus increased cholesterol so these five risk factors are rampantly common i, I mean having a common soil for this obstructive sleep apnea there's an overlap kind of thing diabetic patient one I mean, one third to one fourth diabetic patients have obstructive sleep apnea. One fifth hypertensive patients have obstructive sleep apnea. Half of obese patients have obstructive sleep apnea. Fifteen percent hypothyroid patients have obstructive sleep apnea, and around twenty percent of high cholesterol patients have obstructive sleep apnea. So it's a common soil or common ground from where these uh, tangible risk factors ultimately may culminate into your coronary artery disease that is heart block that's the uh, uh, main problem behind this obstructive sleep apnea in this uh, era of obesity boom what is happening out there in the western world and percolating in indian societies and 
South Asian Asia, we are facing an obesity boom along with diabetes uh, pandemic of diabetes and hypertension and these metabolic syndrome or metabolic disorder, sedentary lifestyle, westernized, uh, I mean, diet habit, dietary habits, increased cholesterol, body, obesity, central obesity, sedentary lifestyle, increased job stress. So it is a kind of lifestyle mm. disorder. Absurd sleep apnea. It's 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 uh, kind of underdiagnosed, undiagnosed. It's it's present uh, in a in an undercurrent state in a society from teenage, and uh, we should be able to diagnose it very much uh, early in the uh, in your life cycle kind of thing in a teenager in the twenties or thirties, so that we can rectify it, and maybe. Uh, by rectifying, you can defer the development of your diabetes, hypertension, metabolic syndrome, and obesity, and all those things by at least one decade. Okay, so it is uh, as mentioned by Dr. Sumanto. It's a clearly it's a risk factor for the cardiac problem, and he also mentioned that people generally don't come to know that they are undergoing a sleep disorder, and it needs to be diagnosed early. Right. Now, since you have mentioned that, sir, uh, how do we actually? Diagnosis: Are there any, you know, particular symptoms one one should be careful of, or let's say, you know, if you can define for us that what is the ideal sleep time and you know what kind of deviation, uh, if it happens, you can say that it's a problem. So I mean, the one is sleep hygiene. Okay. So I have a disturbed sleep and increased amount of snoring. We, we, I mean, maybe in, in Indian society, maybe 70, 75% male are snorer. That doesn't mean they all are having this obstructive sleep apnea. This is one, one point or one, one just criteria is snoring or decreased sleep. But I mean, more important is daytime somnolence, daytime sleepiness. In, in daytime, I'm not feeling that much energized kind of thing. I doze at my workplace and the sleep hygiene is bad and i have recurrent multiple episodes of sleep breakage at night whenever i am sleeping sleep breakage means this is called apnea hypopnea so whenever we sleep there are some physiological changes going on in our body blood pressure comes down pulse rate comes down so in these cases these physiological things don't happen and what do we feel uh, I mean, there is a sympathetic, I mean, uh, surge is going on at night, which increases heart rate, increases blood pressure. And there is uh, this choking of our uh, upper part of the pharynx and larynx. So, and that is called apnea. It's for some uh, period of time, maybe some few seconds, our breath is stopped. And then some reactionary mechanisms, counteractive mechanisms fall in place. And then again, uh, and the sleep cycle continues. This multiple breakage is called apnea hypopnea. And per hour, if it is more than 15, it's a subtle thing. You, you, I mean, if I am a bystander, somebody is sleeping uh, beside me, may, I, I may not be able to pick up the thing. I, I, I just able to pick up one, he is snoring and he is kind of a moving, kind of jittery movement is there. And then again, he is sleeping. This is sleep breakage and this is called apnea and hypopnea. If it is more than 15 per hour cycle, then it is stamped as having obstructive sleep apnea. There is a diagnostic algorithm how to diagnose that it is not an easy process. It's not that all the patients who snore are having obstructive sleep apnea. You should fit into the criteria. If you have any doubt, maybe specifically obese patient and hypothyroid patients, diabetic patients, all should have a screen are done at age of around 30s to diagnose obstructive sleep apnea because this is a preventable one we can treat it and by treating obstructive sleep apnea somewhere maybe around 5, uh, 5 to 10 percent or 10 to 15 percent there's a chance we can delay the development of blood sugar or blood pressure or thyroid or kind of reduce uh, uh, i mean three or four kgs of uh, body weight okay so, so definitely, you know, there is an emphasis which is laid uh, by Dr. Sumanto on diagnosing it, it timely and he has given the symptoms as well. Now, I think some of these symptoms you may not be able to pick up, 
but you know your family members or your uh, exactly. people at home they would be able exactly. to so easiest would be if you are uh, feeling you know non energized uh, in the day and you are feeling lazy uh, you know maybe ask your partner or ask your family members to give you feedback that you know are you snoring in the night are you able to exactly. some, some video clipping some video recordings may help and uh, ultimately there are some diagnostic tools at laboratory a sleep hygiene uh, test or at your home polysomnography test apply a link test some tests are there that will that will uh, record what's going on in your blood pressure what's going on in your heart rate in ecg and how much breakage in sleep this apnea hypopnea is going on depending on that one we stage the disease as mild moderate severe and accordingly we place your treatment or or pitch your treatment to you this is a kind of treatment where reduction number one treatment and number two some gadgets are there uh, this is called cpap continuous positive pressure airway that will keep uh, i mean that will be placed in your this site and that will put push a positive pressure in your larynx and pharynx so that they do not collapse during your sleep and this uh, this positive pressure will give you a good uh, i mean uh, tight sleep at night this will reduce your daytime somnolence and ultimately in a vicious cycle this will reduce your calm down your blood pressure at night calm down your heart rate at night and reduce few kg of body weight because this is a chronic process and vicious cycle kind of thing increase in sympathetic nervous system increase in endorphins may increase your body weight so ultimately cpap may have some impact in your sugar pressure thyroid uh, heart failure status and uh, body weight ultimately yeah. they can have some uh, effort ultimately this will give you a very good tight sleep yeah and so another question from a you know a community common man perspective there are a lot of things said about sleep that okay this is the total duration of sleep we should be there some people will say 6 hours some will say 8 and then you know you will have uh, in saying you know i sleep only for 4 hours and I'm, studying so what is I'm, the right duration no no no, no. i mean i mean i'm today is i mean topic is about the cardiovascular elements or cardiovascular impact and your sleep apnea syndrome okay so i mean there there are plenty of studies and this and that regarding your sleep and sleep hygiene but i mean this amount of sleep is necessary and this amount of sleep is and this is the exact timing uh, for your uh, bed time this is not the uh, exact situation but definitely 6 to 7 hours sleep is mandatory sleep is a time when uh, uh, i mean uh, our bmi is the least one and our pressure sugar everything should come down so that's the main uh, i mean these are in a diurnal variation so in morning our blood pressure surges up at night blood pressure comes down because our endorphins our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems are equipped or or fitted like this okay so, so if you do not give that time so that that things will be elevated uh, the, this sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system the counteractive balances will be misfit and that will produce discomfort that will produce your uh, sugar pressure and that these these endorphin levels and pulse rate kind of thing will be in a higher side and ultimately that in a chronic process maybe after say one decade may produces this kind of lifestyle disorder that's the main hypothesis behind these uh, this obstructive sleep apnea or sleep hygiene kind of thing Sir, a uh, couple of you know final questions I'll take, and that is related to specifically you know patients who have cardiac problems. If someone is having you know high blood pressure or cholesterol and some other heart uh, related risk, or if someone has undergone a procedure, so you know how important the sleep becomes for them. How do you ensure and guide your patients that you know uh, they should be having a sound sleep? Sleep, apart from this thing, sleep hygiene is. Another utmost thing, another utmostly important thing, because this is our best stress buster. Sleep is our best stress buster. Apart from your meditation, yoga, swimming, and this and that, sleep is our best stress buster. So, 
in in today's world so, so much stressful personal life and occupational life and vocational life stress is a i mean stress and pollution these two are the uh, one of the most important risk factors beside your diabetes pressure uh, sugar this kind of thing so sleep helps in that also post bypass surgery post angioplasty patients stress is one of the most uh, important risk factor Hel- uh, sleep helps in that too so what do we see after say 30 years or 35 years or 40 years if patients are obese they complain that they snore and some sleep breakage at night and patients are having multiple risk factors definitely we should and we are going for a sleep study to diagnose is he is suffering from obstructive sleep apnea and we can pitch a therapy for that thing yeah so we uh, one final question we see a lot of you know people getting cardiac disease at the early age today and we also know that you know the current uh, the gen y or the gen z uh, a lot of people have shifting duties like they're working at night uh, sleeping in morning or people otherwise who are in emergency services so how do you you know guide them or should they seek medical advice from a cardiologist uh, if they have uh, such schedules yeah so in today's world this is most important that shifting duty hampers our sleep cycle definitely but what we say that at least three days or four days uh, i mean four days per week three days or four days per week is important you should have a sound sleep at four days a week you should have a sound sleep that also uh, uh, can improve your uh, i mean uh, lifestyle kind of thing if we, i am having diabetes i am having hypertension i am having obesity and multiple risk factors in that case and also i am suffering from obstructive sleep apnea in that case rotational duty stamped these four or five risk factors then rotational duty shift duty i i i suggest at least four to five nights uh, you should spare for your health two nights okay you can do shift uh, shifting duty not more than two days per week in, in these uh, category of patients Okay, so I think that's the guidance uh, uh, Dr. Subhanto gave to you, and and many people have you know such work schedules in uh, current times. Uh, I think uh, this brings us to you know that we have covered the topic more or less uh, today on sleep disorders and the associated cardiac risk. Uh, it's very very important, as highlighted by Dr. Subhanto, that one should have a good sleep cycle. A lot of people miss the diagnosis early on in the life cycle and it is important to get the diagnosis right uh, early on. And if you have certain symptoms related to this, you know, be cautious and uh, and meet your doctor and, you know, get yourself uh, fully checked also on this. There are uh, right ways, correct ways of medical ways of diagnosing this as well. And your Thank doctor you. will guide you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sumanto, uh, uh, for this whole program today. And we thank all of our viewers as well. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.